Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review, and I'm here today to talk to you about <sighs> Titan Season 3, Episode 12. You know, I used to say, like, I truly believe that this show had multiple writers. One writer would come in one day, write something from one episode, the next writer would come in for the next episode, and they'll be all like, Hey, so um, what happened in last week's episode? And the other writer would be like, eh, it don't matter. Just do what you want. Cool. <laughs> and then so they'll just do what they want without having any, anything connect, anything continuity-wise, messing up continuity. But now it seems like even the editors <laughs> and directors are just kind of like, yeah, whatever. We just do what we want in the same episode. Like, there are just so many things in this episode that makes no sense. And I hate sounding like a do downer and everything, but it's just like there's good writing and there's bad writing. Like I've been ragging on Stargirl all season, mainly because it's not as good as the first, but at least their stuff is consistent and at least their stuff actually makes sense. Titans don't make no sense. Titans don't make no sense story wise. Writing wise, um, direction wise, production wise, even the costumes, man. There's a scene, there's two scenes in here. One is a minor scene I can kind of overlook a little, but the other one's a major one. <laughs> it doesn't make no sense. Where did the dude costume go? <laughs> he had it all in one minute. <laughs> Next thing he said, we're gonna close. Like, what happened? How did they, how did they overlook that? <laughs> how? <laughs> I don't get it. And it's just like, screw this show, man. If the writers don't care, why in the world should I? Like, why should I continue to watch this for a fourth, if it gets picked up for a fourth season? Why? This entire story arc was interesting. It was based off of a very famous comic. A very famous animated movie. And they screwed it up. I don't get it. I just don't get it. But there were some cool things that did happen in this episode. So it's not like I was entirely pissed off. Um, so let's just get in some things that I am cool about. One, I'm happy that pretty much everybody in the show has some screen time. Like, everybody actually got to do something. Even Gar got to do something cool for once in his stinking life. And then after he done that one cool thing, that was it. <laughs> but I do like how everybody was in this episode, which everybody should be because there's only one episode left. Um, I love that interaction between um, Commander, which is still a weird name. I'll just call it Blackfire. Blackfire, when she commandeered that dude's vehicle. <laughs> that was hilarious. I wish that would have went on longer. I really, really do. I like that Beast Boy finally turned into a completely different animal other than a um, tiger. That was really cool. Everything. Oh, I'm tired. Man. What time is it? It's like 12, almost 1. I'm sorry for yawning on this video. My bad, everybody. I record these so late. I'm just exhausted. I've been doing so much crap today. I barely had time to even watch a lot of Halloween stuff. Anyway, so like, um, yeah, it was cool he turned into a bat. But then the stuff that happened to that was kind of like, well, how is that possible? Um, something else I found cool. Oh, Barbara. Her escape was awesome. She didn't even have to say nothing. It was just, it was just like a nice quick little moment. And it was cool seeing her wheel away. And then it was cool seeing her wheel away when people was chasing after her. And then, you know, so that part was really cool. I like that a lot. And well, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so, okay, let's get into things I don't like. And it also, yeah, it is a review. So, first thing I didn't like. Okay, so Jonathan Crane is kind of like explaining his plan a little bit to Jason, not really. And then Crane snaps. 
And then, so, like, he takes his giant weapon that he used to have a long time ago when he was Scarecrow. Which, by the way, he has his mask. Why doesn't he put it on? I know Batman made fun of him and everything about, you know, the mask and everything. But still, he should have put it on before Batman made fun of him. I just don't get it. So, in a way, what doesn't make no sense is that he has his giant chain or a giant hook on the end of it. And he starts throwing it at um jason started attacking him and what doesn't make no sense is that jason was actually terrified dodging it and actually falls to the ground in fear um jason has been trained by batman and the titans and he can't even defeat a mama's boy pothead breast milk drinking idiot <laughs> like he can't even defeat that dude I don't understand why they're making this scarecrow so like tough in there, I think. And it's just like Jason has been trained by the best and he's getting his butt whooped. And he's scared. Now I can understand it if he took some of that fear stuff, but he didn't. So I don't get it. I don't understand why they made this version of Scarecrow Hugo Strange meets the Joker. I don't get it. He's smart and intelligent, like Hugo Strange. But he's ma maniacal, sinister, and just nuts. And even laughs like the Joker. If they wanted to bring the Joker, just bring him in. Oh, wait, they can't. Because for some reason, they keep using him for all the movies and say they can't use him for TV shows. But they could do like they did in Gotham and get away with it. You know, so that would have been cool. But they won't do that. Another thing doesn't make sense about this entire season. It was the beginning of the first episode when we see Jason asleep and there goes Donna hovering over his body in a ghost-like state. They still have not explained that. Speaking of Donna, the stuff between her and Tim was just kind of like just the same as last week. Boring. Didn't really lead up to much of nothing. She left and she came back and there's this armored like SWAT vehicle and it's her driving it. She beat up the guards that was in it. That would have been nice to see. They need to show her fighting more. She's freaking Wonder Girl. However, towards the end, um, when they're back in the vehicle again, the dad is driving and then she gets out. She doesn't even really fight the guards, really. She just rips off the door and uses it as a bulletproof shield. And I'm just like, hey, that's cool. But let's see some action, man. So the whole Tim wanting to be Robin and has to defend the city and he's destined to be Robin. He's destined. Like he used that phrase, I'm like, God, oh, they went to the CW territory, which is something I don't like. I get so tired of hearing Barry. That lightning bolt was destined to hit you. And it's your destiny to run, Barry. Run, Barry. I hate hearing that word. <laughs> they even started using that in the promos of the CW in general. Defy your... No, no, no. Defy something. I don't know. But anyway, I hate the word destiny now because of that. And so I'm thinking to myself, okay, we know he's supposed to be Robin from the comic books. He'll find out who Dick was because of that one maneuver. Comic book accurate. I appreciated that. However, him finding out everything else, who Bruce Wayne is, who the Titans are. See, this is what happened when Dick runs around town hanging with the Titans in a costume and they have no mask on. You know, somebody's bound to figure out. And he did. My only problem with him being Robin is that it's happening a little too quickly. Like, him finding out everything was a little too quickly. Um... We now know he has like a little man cave with computers and stuff, so that's cool. But it's just kind of like, I wish it it would have happened more in a season. It happens sporadically in a season. Like, you'll see him in one episode, and he won't show back up until like four episodes later. Now, that one episode when he tagged around Nightwing, when Nightwing didn't know, and he got shot by Crane, that was cool because at least he was doing stuff that makes us feel that he should be Robin. But well, why should he be Robin? We haven't seen him fight. He's scared of crap. He always thinks he should do this and do that and defies orders. And it's just like, what makes him a Robin? That's what I want to know. You know what I'm saying? Like when Bruce Tim introduced Batgirl in season two, I believe it was, in Batman the Animated Series. He didn't just straight up make her bad girl. He had her lingering around a couple of episodes, had her do detective work, showed her skills, showed her acrobatics. 
um, showed her fighting skills, and then she became Batgirl. And when she did, she struggled. And they're doing the same thing kind of here, but they're doing it in a more of a lame kind of way. Now, like I said before, Beast Boy turned into a bat. Okay, that was awesome. What I don't understand, and what makes no sense, is he asked Raven, can you heal Dick because he's dying? She said no. Now, this fool, she knows she can't bring nobody back from the dead. She spent months doing that to Donna, and it did not work. So what made her think she could bring him back to the dead? But then I'm like, fool, you have access to a Lazarus pit that you was just in a couple, well, you were standing near a couple of minutes ago. Why don't you use that? But then Gar has the idea to use the Lazarus pit. I'm like, at least somebody's using his brain. So he turned into a bat. I'm like, this is cool, but this is what I don't understand. The bats just randomly appear around Dick. Which is weird, but it's just a Batman thing to do. So, it, that's alright, you know what I'm saying? Like, in the comics and stuff. Now, it, it's not explained how he turned into a bat. What made him turn into it. It just kind of, like, triggered once he saw it. And he was upset. And I think they later explained that it's because of his heart and how much he loves Dick and everything. And I'll get into that a little bit later. And then, so, like, this is the part that don't make no sense. He's now able to control other animals when he turns into them. As far as I've known, he's never had that ability in the comic books or cartoon series. So this is brand new. And if he is able to do that, then that makes him a very dangerous person. And the most powerful of them all is kind of like a squirrel girl ability. Squirrel girl might be silly and goofy and she might be able to control squirrels. But if she has enough squirrels to attack you, they will kill you. And that's what happened to Thanos in the comic books. She killed Thanos. And so, anyway. Then the bats, they do something interesting. They hover around Dick's body, latch on to him, lift him up. I don't know how strong bats are. And I guess it's kind of like an ant thing. If you have enough ants, they're stronger than 10, like men, something like that. But I don't think a bat can do that. <laughs> Not even not, like 20 of them. I don't think 20 bats can lift a human being up. I just don't believe that. And they and he takes them back to the Lazarus pit. Speaking of the Lazarus pit, so Dick goes in there. And I knew I knew they were gonna use it. Cause I mean they, they introduced it again back in the last episode. So it's kinda like I wish they would have left us lingering to the last episode to bring Dick back alive, some suspense. But anyway. He goes in as Nightwing. Okay, he goes in as Nightwing. You see him in the full costume, mask, everything. Towards the end of the episode when he comes out, guess what? He's no longer wearing his Nightwing costume. He's now wearing regular civilian clothes. And that is what really pissed me off to make this video. Because I wasn't even really going to make one. I didn't want to sound like a dude down there. But how in the world did the Lazarus Pit create clothes to put on him? And what did it do to his costume? He's not wearing those clothes underneath his costume. He's naked underneath his costume. Where in the world is his Nightwing suit? How did the Lazarus Pit create clothes? It's not even the clothes he was wearing in his dream state, which I will get into in a little bit. This makes absolutely no sense. It's like the editors and the directors are all like, okay, let's do this thing. And they're like, oh crap, we lost the costume. And eh, whatever, we'll just put them in regular clothes. It won't matter. It matters. <laughs> it matters. <laughs> it matters. It matters. Because this has left me like flabbergasted. <laughs> flabbergasted is not a phrase I use because it's such an old school term. <laughs> but where the heck is his costume? Where? Where? <laughs> I can't get over that. <laughs> I seriously can't. I can't even move on from this thought. Where is his costume? Where did he get those clothes from? Where? Like, if that's not enough to piss some, to, 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 to irritate somebody at least, then what is? <laughs> like, seriously. <laughs> Where the world did his costume go? <laughs> I can't.
can't get off this thought. Ah. <laughs> uh. So something doesn't make no sense. Ever since season one, when Beast Boy turns into an animal, he takes his clothes off. And when he takes his clothes off and he transforms back into a human, he is completely butt naked. That has been established in season one and in season two. In the beginning of season three, like I told you, they changed that. All of a sudden now he has clothes, he has his costume on, or no, he has his costume, he don't wear a costume. He has his clothes. He transforms. A split second later, he retransforms and he has his clothes back on. Then later on in the season, he transforms, retransforms, and he's butt naked. Now, I mean, he turned into a bat. He turned into uh, first a man bat, but then a little teeny tiny bat. And his clothes dropped on the ground. Raven followed him. She did not bring his clothes. And when he turned back into human, do you know what he was wearing? Pants. Where'd he get those pants from? Where? Well, did the pants son of a son turn tiny when he turned into a bat and then turned back to human size? This is not Young Justice. His costume don't do that. In Young Justice, when this dude turns into an animal, his clothes somehow turns into like a collar. Don't know how, but it does. Where did this dude get pants from? Where, where, where? Oh, but that's not the most interesting thing in them all. Let's get to Dick. <laughs> Another cool thing with Beast Boy transformation is like the picture on the left. That is how Beast Boy is supposed to look. Fuzzy fangs, weird looking eyes, green skin. So it's nice to see just for like a, a brief moment, you know? Now, while Dick is in like the Lazarus pit, he's in some type of like dreamlike state. I don't mind that. That, that happens, you know what I'm saying? That was, that was interesting to see. Until it didn't make no sense. In his dreamlike state, for some bizarre reason, Jonathan Crane is talking to him. Why? Don't know, but he is. He's constantly talking to him, telling him how Jason is bad and you must kill him. So all of a sudden, Dick turns into the Joker, costume only, not face makeup or hair, because they're not allowed to do that. Just like Gotham wasn't. And however, this Joker costume is lame. This Joker costume is basically, see, they're not even allowed to use the colors because of this stupid rule that DC and Warner Brothers has. It's the same thing that happened to Gotham and the reason why their Joker at the end of the season looked the way he did. <sighs> the clothes this version of the Joker wear is just a regular suit, like a regular short little suit. No long white tail, nothing like that. No trench coat, nothing like that. This is what it looks like. It is a, I forgot the color of the shirt. Anyway, there's a shirt underneath. And there's like a purple vest. That's nice. I like that. They have a yellow tie. I would prefer orange or green, but I will deal with this. So that's okay. Now this is the parts I don't like. This suit is black, not dark purple, black. I don't like that. I want Joker wearing purple. It's his colors. And then they give him these bright yellow gloves, which is just too distracting. Being at night, having a black outfit, a dark purple vest, a bright yellow tie, and now these bright yellow gloves. It's like he's basically like a flashlight. I don't like that look. Anyway. So he takes the crowbar and he's beating the crap out of Jason. And we actually see him beating Jason's face. That's cool to see because it reminds me so much of the comic book. I wish they could have shown more of that with the Joker, but they're not allowed to show the Joker. So they have to do the Joker from far away and everything. I wonder who played him, I wonder. Anyway, then it goes to that. And Dick is getting ready to come out the Lazarus pit, but then he's all like, no, you can't make me do this. So then all of a sudden, we see him and his dad. His dad is there when Dick was younger and his dad tells him, look man, I don't blame you. Cause Dick blames himself for his dad's dad. He's like, look man, it's not your fault. I love you son. Then something interesting happened. Now, this part I thought was cute, but it confused me at first. We see a little black girl and she has like a red balloon. And I'm thinking I'm getting some it vibes over here. 
So I'm just like, why is Dick dreaming of a little black girl for it? I don't make no sense. I'm like, wait, hold up, hold up. In season one of Titans, him and Starfire, they did it. They clickety clacked. And that's something I thought to myself. Oh, okay. This is his imaginary daughter uh, from the comic books. Now, the comic book daughter, cause they have, him and Starfire do have a kid. Right now, it's controversial because a bunch of comic book fans can't get over her appearance because she's overweight and she's goth and people just like, what the world is this? There's nothing wrong with that. Anyway, I'm not reading the comment, but whatever, people. You've seen goth people and overweight people before. Anyway, so she calls him dad. That was a cute little moment. It does make me wonder. Since Corey is an alien and her body is different from humans, what if she's pregnant? And don't know it. I mean, how long does the baby last in the belly, you know, in the, in the alien body? But I doubt it, because he had a dream that him and Dove had a kid and that never showed up in this series, so you know. So before Dick comes out the pit, um, Gar and Rachel are having a very, very touching scene. And it's nice to see. I like that. But here's my problem with her. Why is her whole demeanor different now? She is completely different than what she was in season one and two. It's like she had a complete makeover internally and out. Even when she showed back up finally in this series, in this season, she was still acting like her normal self, like her teeny boppy self. Then after Donna came back alive, all of a sudden, Raven has now changed. She talks differently. She dresses differently. She keeps showing like window, like boob area and stuff like that, cleavage and stuff. What you gotta remember, this, when you think of her age, now she's 17 years old in real life. That's still young, I don't care. But her character is a lot younger than that. Why do we need to see, I think her character is like 15 in the show. Why do we need to see 15 year old cleavage boob? Why? Yuck. We don't need to see that. Now, I don't mind if it's Corey. I don't mind if it's Wonder Girl or Dawn or Dub or whatever her name is. But why a little teenage girl? But also, why is her demeanor completely different now? I don't get it. She's acting, I'm glad she's acting more like the Raven from like the cartoon series. More calm, more mellow, keeping her emotions in check, more philosophical. But this was a complete 180. And it happened in the snap of a finger. I don't get that. Also, what I don't get is that she's telling Gar, like when you know when how he why he was able to transform because he loves Dick. Um, I'm, I'm I, I have a really interesting feeling they're gonna turn this version of Beast Boy LGBT. I just have because he was too close to Jason. Now he's too close to Dick. And in the first season, he was close to Raven. But nothing happened at that. Speaking of that, what I don't understand is that when she was telling him, like when her father tried to take over, she just thought about her friends and how much she loves them and stuff. Which is very shocking because she didn't know them all that well. But she loved them, she said, after she only known them for a few days and a few weeks. But then she tells Gar, you know, I love you and everything. And, you know, you give me strength. And I'm just like... You haven't known these people for that long, but you love them. And then also the way she said she loves Gar was kind of weird. Almost like she was in love with him, which when did she ever fall in love with him? She hung out with him playing video games in that one episode, that Doom Patrol episode, but that's about it. In season two, they barely hung out. And I'm thinking to myself, he could be secretly LGBT because he never said he loved her back or even cared about her. And, you know, I just don't, uh, I'm just like, I think it's going to happen, you know, and stuff. Which, if it does, then it kind of negates the first season, but hey, whatever, you know what I'm saying? This show don't make no sense. What also don't make no sense is that when Dick came out the Lazarus pit, he's all like, hey, I know how to defeat Crane now. How? <laughs> Even they asked that. <laughs> like, how did he get the know-how to defeat him? Now, that. But he tells them... Go back and get Connor while I left him, and then we all meet up. And they're all like, where? He's like, where Donna's at? And they're all like, and this would all make no sense. Raven's like, Donna? Okay, first of all, Raven, you know she's back alive. 
like she does know that, right? When she went back to Finn and Skier in that one room, she was gone. So she knows she's alive. But this whole time she's been back, she has not been looking for Donna. Why not? And also, how exactly did Dick know that Donna's alive? Did he have some kind of like weird vision that we didn't get to see when he was in the pit? Uh, I don't get that. And so, like, how did he know? Mm. Now, I like the part, like I said, when Barbara, like, escaped. But then she went back to Oracle, trying to, like, turn it back on. Oh, don't you remember you turned that thing off? <laughs> and then she asked Oracle, hey, how do I turn you back on? Um, it shut itself off. It's not going to talk to you. And also, uh, Crane still has access to that device. So, no, I think, no, I think Starfire blew it up. But anyways, um, I guess she's going to use it to, to stop Crane's master plan, which is still the same plan he had years ago, I think. I'm not 100% sure. Then, the whole interaction with Dick and Jason. Jason just walks through the street shooting up, acting like a tough guy. Speaking of which, where are the people of Gotham? There's never nobody on the street. Like, have you ever noticed that? Unless they need somebody to be on the street. Like when Dick and um, when Nightwing and Jason were fighting. That is the only time they are on the street. Anyways, they're having a talk. And it sounds like Dick forgives him. Which he kind of does. I'm just like, dude, the dude betrayed y'all team. He's murdering people left and right. He let Scarecrow run amok all over Gotham and all over the Batcave. And he's just all like, yo, man, I need your help. <laughs> and so then Jason, he's all like, you know, can I be like, um, what am I, like a Titan again? And I'm just, and he's like, no, you'll never be a Titan again. Jason's truly asked, like, hey, man, <laughs> can I be a Titan again? <laughs> like, what does that make me? <laughs> like, he think, like, well, 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 what does he think? And not only that, but he thought Dick was a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> and he feels sorry. Why are they trying to redeem Jason? Why are they trying to make him feel like he's sorry? All this stuff he's did all season. All this stuff. And they're trying to make us forgive him. Man, forget you, writers. But of course, uh, Crane is a million steps ahead of them. And he gets the device that he needs out. His fear toxin stuff. Oh, by the way, what also I don't like is that it seems now that every cop in Gotham now knows that Batman is Bruce Wayne and where the Batcave is. Because some members of the police force go down into the Batcave and give Crane his fear toxin. I'm like, oh my god. The secret identities not mean nothing to Craig Bertinelli and like Jeff Johns. Like, does it not? <laughs> like, Batman's entire identity is now told to the entire um, Gotham City um, police force? Like, oh my god, dude. <laughs> but the biggest thing I don't understand is what happened with Connor. <sighs> oh my god. <laughs> oh boy, that was a doozy. <laughs> so, like, him and, like, you know, Blackfire, they reconnect, they kiss. They talking about how they're going to be like a duo and everything. Screw the Titans. Screw everybody else. They're going to do their own thing. Be bad or whatever. And it's like, dude, you want to be bad all of a sudden? But you got to remember, he's part Lex Luthor. So then, her unfinished business that she had to take care of, she wants to kill that one scientist dude that held her captive. And Superboy's going to go along with it. He's bullying the dude. He's interrogating the dude. He holding the dude up in the air. He's like... Blackfire is going to murder that man. He knows that and does not care. What the world, man? Like, he spent these last couple of months being a good guy. Protecting people. Then, she hits him with a bombshell. She's ready to go back home. And be a queen. He's all like, dude, I'm in love with you and everything. I can't breathe on your planet. And so... She's all like, eh, well, I gotta go back home. Bye. <laughs> so he has to help get her the fuel back she needs to get back into space. 
but he tricks her. He sabotages her um her spaceship. It blows up and he turns around dark Superman style, evil Superman style, injustice, the video game Superman style. He's pissed. He has turned to the dark side. And it's like, okay, part of me is cool with that because you know he is part less Luther and it is that canvas stuff still inside him. But the only part that irks me just a little bit is like he spent this entire season the last season being good. How all of a sudden he's gonna turn evil again? Like he turned evil last time because of the canvas stuff, but also reaction when he saw the guards, he ended up killing them the first his first appearance. But that was the only time. Since then he's been a hero. I don't get how his emo well, Superman's very emotional. So now this makes me wonder. Is he gonna be the villain next season? <sighs> it's probably about the whole Blackfire thing. She was supposed to be the villain. She wasn't. Then they like completely ruined her character. And when she was finna go home, I was just like, what was the point of even bringing her in the show if she wasn't even gonna be a villain? You know, I mean, Starfire has murdered more people than Blackfire. <laughs> I don't even think Blackfire has murdered anybody since she's been on Earth. Except for that um, woman who body she took off. I think that lady's free now or something. I don't know. But yeah. And something else that's interesting, when Barbara made her escape, the guards said that Crane wants her alive. I'm thinking to myself, well, why? Why does he need her alive for? The only thing that she's able to do that's really powerful is the Oracle device. Somehow, Oracle is going to play some kind of plot in his scheme for the next episode. I am curious to know what that is. It'd be fun to be some type of Mad Hatter um, mind control type thing but hey who knows you know what I'm saying these are just like all the things that bug me in this entire episode and that's basically the what all happened in the review and it's just like nothing made no sense nothing and I want to know where Dick's costume is also where is Bruce alrighty well I'll talk to y'all later bye